welcome to my new video. In this one, I'm going to show you how to set up Alhavai's U30 Jura settings. It is very easy, very straightforward, and I'm going to show you all the steps from my computer screen. But before that, I would just want to show you this Iron Man helmet because the settings that I'm going to teach you right now are the settings that I use to 3D print this Iron Man helmet. You will also see it in the other video uh, hanging around in this video in the description where you will see how to assemble this Iron Man helmet and there will be more steps coming soon for making this one look beautiful like a real Iron Man helmet. So in this video we are gonna focus on these drawer settings to 3D print this entire Iron Man helmet in high quality and for me everything with these settings took 200 hours to 3D print entire helmet. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Also, you will be able to see some links in the description down below for discounts for Alphavise U30 and many other 3D printers. So go check them out as well. I also want to show you the layers in a close look. So this is how it looks like. As you can see, it's pretty good, pretty obvious, very small layers. And this is not sanded yet and I'm going to send it to you. In here, this is my fingerprint when I was using uh, super glue. So just a warning again, be careful while using a super glue uh, because it's just like causing deformation on the surface of the printed objects, right? So be careful with the super glue usage. But when we refocus on the layers and everything, Alphaways U30 made a great job. If you like this video, don't forget to click the like button and share it. And also don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Let's start. Okay, as a first step, what we are going to do is to start with downloading the latest version of the Ultimaker Jura. For that, you go to the Ultimaker website. You can see the link in the description below always. And you go there and you click download for free. And make sure that it is the latest version. Right now, what I'm going to download is Ultimaker Jura 4.2.1. So let's download it. And my computer is Mac, so and my computer is Mac, so I'm going to download Ultimaker Jura for Macintosh open it this is the screen that you are going to face with since i have different 3d printers already installed in here i can see them right on this left hand corner and compared to the older versions of jura they this time this time ultimaker changed the entire interface in a different version so this is pretty new to me as well but let's go over it the entire look has changed and they are uh, basically put everything uh, down to here and we have the quality sections located in here in previously this was like attached to the right hand side and we were able to see the left hand side as the printer build space but when we close it right now we can see the entire build space as is it, as it is so and in here is the general nozzle the material section in here the quality and all the settings that we are going to work on uh, and i will tell you which ones are and i will tell you which ones we are going to use at that point and in here preview uh, i guess it's going to preview the entire thing in the monitor where i generally don't use you will be able to monitor the print when you connect that via usb i guess but let me know if you know uh, in detail so for adding ultravise u30 we click this section over here and go to the add printer in here uh, there are networked printers and non-networked printers this is new too of course, our printer is a non-networked printer. And it is a printer from Alphavise. So when we click it, we are seeing the Alphavise U30 already in there, defined. So which is great. It, this wasn't available in the previous versions. We just click that and we click add. When you edit, as you can see, it decreases the size of the build plate too. Simply right now, our Alphavise U30 is added. But if you want to manage more, you click Alphavise U30 and go to the Manage 3D Printers. In Alphavise U30 over here, you click Machine Settings. Then you click the Machine Settings, you are able to see the width, depth, height, and the build plate shape, origin at centers, of course not, um, heated bed, clicked, G code flavor Marlin and print head settings right in here. We don't need to change the start cord, but it is if you if you want to go over it is like starts with the G21 metric values, absolute positioning, set the extruder, start with the fan off, and moving first it's moving X and Y to the stops, and then it's moving to Z to the stop, and it's moving up a little bit slightly up, and then it is going to create a single line on the build plate. 
and it will continue the line and then it will zero the extruder length and it will get ready to start. I like this intro line because it's helping to clean your extruder and it is good that they add this one. It, it was available in the Creality Ender 3 before but it wasn't available in Alpha YG30 which is good. And end G code is basically shutting down your extruder, cooling down your extruder, shutting down the heated bed and making the retraction and relative positioning and moving up the Z axis and zeroing the X and Y. So, and also it's turning the steppers off, which is good too. And when you go to the extruder one, which is our extruder, our nozzle size is 0 0.4 and the material diameter is 1.75, which is great. So we don't need to change anything in here, but if you want to make some tweaks at the start G code or end G code, you can just do that. But the settings are here that are already preset for the printer. So let's click close and let's close this one too. Right now, what we are going to do is to click here and set the print settings. Okay, for the Iron Man helmet that I showed you guys, I used the layer height of 0.08 millimeters. If you want to save some time, you can go up to 0.1 or even 0.15. It is definitely up to your taste, but it's a trade-off. So if you want a bad layer height quality, but you want to sand it down later to save some time, you need to go upper in layer height but if you want a higher quality maybe you just don't want to paint it or sand it you go down in the layer height and i prefer 0.08 but you can make it differently like 0.1 or above but i don't suggest you to go over 0.2 millimeters for the wall thickness i generally use the custom values unless i need a thicker wall to put in a screw or something like that but 0.6 and 0.8 are good values for the infill, I generally use 25% because I want it to be sturdy and robust, so it is better, but you can also do 20% too, which is great. There's no problem with that, but don't go below 20% because it might be weak and you don't want to damage your helmet that you spent 200 hours of print time. And I'm going to keep this as 25%. And for the print temperature, I generally go 4 Celsius above the 200 Celsius degree. I generally use 204. This is kind of a habit, but 200 is not gonna hurt it. But I just make it 204. And for the build temperature, 60 is always good, and flow is 100%. If you realize the kind of like a warping, those kind of stuff, if your bed adhesion is bad or the filament that you are using is maybe low quality, you go up to 65 but 60 is good. For the re retraction distance, I generally use seven millimeter or 10 millimeter, but this changes between 3D printers. So what I suggest you is just keep it five millimeter. And when you're printing your object, if you see oozing between the pillars, or if you see oozing between the bridges, increase that distance. But right now, five millimeter is good. I generally use 40 millimeter or 45 millimeter per second for my print speed, because if you speed it up, Sometimes, depending on the printer's quality, it may create ghosting or shadowing in the lines and the writings. So keep it slower, it's going to be much more safer, but it should be good to go up to 60 millimeter per second. And I'm also decreasing my travel speed to 60 millimeter per second when I'm doing my print speed as 45 millimeter. Or you can also do 80 millimeter per second, which I used for this Iron Man helmet. For the travel, Z hop when retracted, this is not necessary, but if you think that your nozzle hits your object, you can do that. And enable cooling will always be enabled. And generate support, yes. Everywhere, yes. You want to support on top of your already printed object too, when it comes to the eyes of the Iron Man helmet. And for the overhang angle, I generally go beyond 70 degree because up to 70 degree, everything is good. So for the build plate adhesion, for alpha y specifically i use raft and i use these values as come as they come default why i use raft is because it is a long print and you want a great adhesion it will be very dissatisfying if you see your object pop out in the middle of the print sometimes the extruder head might hit sometimes something happens by the external forces raft is your best bet to save your print and of course, your, for your print sequence, it is going to be all at once. And these are the settings that I use to 3D print my Iron Man helmet. So what we are going to do right now is to place our object right in here. 
Okay, right now I just placed my Iron Man helmet. This is Mark 42 helmet faceplate. Since I already printed the Iron Man MK3, right now I'm going to place this one in my uh, Alpha Vise U30 and start my print for Iron Man Mark 42 helmet. So as you can see, this is how the plate, as you can see, this is how my faceplate stays. And I'm going to print it like this so that the entire shadow area that you see is going to be the raft and it's going to hold my Iron Man helmet properly. I prefer it this way but you can definitely change your orientation by clicking your object and right in here you click for rotation and then it will allow you to rotate it in three different axes. You just drag these circles and it will rotate your object. And uh, right now what I'm going to do is to keep it in center and I'm going to click slice that appear on the right bottom corner. So when we click slice, we are waiting for it to render the entire thing. And it's going to tell us how many hours or days it's going to take for Alpha Vise U30 to 3D print this Iron Man mask. Okay, right now, as you can see, it is going to take one day, 16 hours or 35 minutes. It's going to use 35 meter of the filament and it's going to take 105 grams. So that's what I'm going to put on my printer and 3D print it. And in my next video, you will be able to see this helmet finished as well. So what we are going to do is right now save the file or if your SD card is included, it's going to turn into save to the SD card. You click it and you put it into your 3D printer and click start and it will print and make the magic and everything is going to be awesome, hopefully. When you come to the preview, you might realize these two sliders on the sides, right? Let's close this one and come closer to our Iron Man helmet. And when you click here, you can see the number of layers is like 2488, uh, the maximum layer. And when we go down with the slider, you are able to see each layer and how it's going to print it, which is awesome. But be careful that when you're doing this, if your computer is not good enough, it might just like uh, slow down and start lagging. So as you can see, when I move this slider to the top, it shows me how it's going to print it. And let's put it somewhere around the middle and let's click this one. So when you click this one, it is showing you where the nozzle is going to travel and how it's going to print uh, layer by layer. I guess this is like per layer it's gonna do that and it will take some time of course to complete that action so let's speed it up and this is how the nozzle is going to finish that layer so which is great and um, okay this is it in this video i show you my parameters that i use for iron man helmet and also i'm going to use same of these parameters in my next iron man helmet too please comment down below to let me know how it's gonna turn out in your hand and let us start 3D printing this beautiful Iron Man helmet. This is the end of my video. I hope you guys like it and I wish you a happy printing of this Iron Man mask. I put all the links down below and also the link to the other video where I assemble this mask and do some sanding on it. So enjoy that video as well and we will be doing another video where i compare all iron man helmets that are 3d printable for free so if you don't want to miss that episode don't forget to subscribe to my channel and see you guys in the next one